Uh, hi, uh, I'm Mark Gatterdam, uh, one of the owners of Hardwood Artisans. This is Kevin Carlson, one of my partners, and this is Hector, his assistant. Uh, today we're going to show you how to put a loft bed together. And we've had have it all laid out here. Um, but while we were laying this out, we realized that uh, the first thing you have to do when you're assembling your loft bed is get a clear concept of its orientation. Any loft bed is uh, available with the ladder placement anywhere around it. Um, there's different options you can get. Uh, the guardrail uh, with a partial opening is going to be in a, your particular position. I can't uh, have the 16 possible combinations of loft footage for every applicable situation. So I'm going to explain to you what this loft is supposed to look like and I'll show you how it's different so that you can figure out the legs and where they need to be oriented. In this particular case, uh, we're going to have a bed underneath the loft over on this side. And the ladder is going to be on the front over here um, on the long front portion. Um, you may have a ladder at the end of the bed uh, or at this end of the bed. So you need to get the concept first. So that being said, this is the front leg. Um, to the loft. And the reason why I know this, the front leg up in the right corner, the reason why I know this is there are no holes drilled here for a guardrail. On the side, the guardrail's drilled, and this is the bed uh, holes down below. So your guardrail over at the top and your bed holes are in the bottom area. So this leg will actually go right here. Because I know that there's a bed underneath and it was asked to have a cutaway, so that the bed pushes as far over as possible. I know this is the other front leg. Can we hold that for me? So now you're just down to the last two legs. And if you look at the holes here and here, and the holes here and here, they're the same. So basically it does not matter which leg goes where in this case. Um, now let me talk about the parts on the floor here. Uh, you have what we call your bands or the area that holds the mattress. You have that set of holes. At the ends of the bed you have this and you have a dado here or a groove in the board. And that's where the decking is going to slide in or the thing that supports the mattress. It will be, the dado will be to the top of the uh, this piece of wood. Um, the rails or the long pieces that are both on the front and the back of the loft have this additional piece of wood applied here, what we call a stringer. Um, so you know that these are the bed, what we call the bed rails. Up in front of that we have pieces with no grooves and no extra pieces of wood. These are all of the guardrails, or the upper tier. We have two pieces like this that are, in fact, the same length as the end rails. So that is where those go. Um, these will go directly above the lower rail. I have one long rail right here. And it's the same length as the lower one, so I know that this is the back rail. And then I have these two pieces. <sighs> That's where the partial ladder opening is in this particular loft. Um, it's going to come across and stop, and the short piece down there is actually this vertical piece. And then the ladder will go right here. So if you have any confusion about this, call us before you start the loft assembly. I've put a loft together and incorrectly and there's nothing more frustrating than having to take it all apart because you confuse two parts. So give us a call if you need. We're going to go ahead and start. Um, I prefer to do the ends yeah. first myself. Uh, Kevin does too. So that's what we're going to do. I'll take this back and we'll take this leg. And Hector and Kevin are going to do this. I'm going to try to make myself useful by getting out of the way. You need two people when you're doing a loft. 
Uh, for safety reasons, if you drop a leg, it probably will shatter. They're very strong, they're lock miter, they're solid wood, but they don't respond well to being dropped. So, uh, what you're going to do is come down and grab yourself uh, the carriage bolts. We also have nuts, washers, and uh, we have here a specific mallet, a rubber mallet would be nice. It, Try not to use a metal hammer. It will, if you miss, it'll scar the wood. Obviously. In addition to that, these nuts require a 7 16 either wrench or socket driver, whichever you have. What they're going to do is line up the hole, push the carriage bolt from the outside in, and he needs to give it a firm whack to seat the uh, square head on the carriage bolt into the wood. Don't be afraid to uh, hit it. It's, uh, it's good. Okay. So he's going to apply the washer and then put a nut on there. To lock it in. Later. Yeah, you're going to tighten it later? Okay. Let's just give it a little finish. Try not to tighten um, all of the bolts up until after the final assembly. It starts out fairly slow. The thing will pick up speed as it moves along. You can see that Kevin is correcting the leg and getting it so that the end rail is tight in the corner and Hector is lining up the holes correctly. The, the end rails, um, in fact, set three quarters of an inch up from the top of the leg, and that is actually by design. So it's not an error. These are not flush to each other. Um, we thought it just looked a little more interesting, so it's more of a uh, aesthetic point. assemble a loft bed um, for the first time, it will probably take you an hour to an hour and a half. Set the first end assembly aside, uh, do the other end assembly. Okay, so you have your ends done. We're going to do the lower uh, or 
band that holds the mattress. You have two rails here. And what needs to be said is that this one has two holes in it in the middle. This one does not. Um, this is to accommodate this partial ladder opening that I was describing earlier. If you have an end ladder opening, neither would have holes in it. Uh, so it wouldn't matter which one you used. You would pick the one you thought was more attractive and put it to the front. Um, here, we have to use this one on the front of the bed. Uh, if you come across a hole that seems odd to you, you should question it. Because more than likely, it's been put there for a very, very specific reason. And you wouldn't want to overlook it and have to redo the lock. This gets to be a bit of a balancing act on the first rail. I once worked with a guy who was 6'5", and he would hold the end of the loft up for me, and he would hold this end over here up with his leg, like so. It was pretty impressive. So once this is firmly uh, attached, uh, it'll just start to go together very quickly. Stepping back into the picture here. Kevin was uh, making note of something that uh, I probably should have gone over. Uh, Hector 
probably has a new tendency to over tighten things, as most people do. You do not want to tighten the nut down to the point where it crushes the head of the bolt into the wood. You only need to snug it up. Um, let's call it very snug. Uh, once the washer or the head of this bolt start compressing into the wood, you're doing damage. So keep an eye on that as you're doing your final tight tightenings. Okay, now this uh, partial opening, this in fact could go this way, or it could go this way. And I can tell you which way it goes. There's a sharp edge left on part of it, and the saw marks have been sanded out at this end here. Um, versus the other end, which is completely sharp. So this looks more finished, in other words, um, down at this end. Uh, it's got a round over here, and that's because the ladder right next to it is exposed. So you're going to want to put more finished looking end next to where the ladder is. So this piece will go up just like this. We're going to do that? We'll do the assembly up here. In there. Mm -hmm. so we'll like that. Mm -hmm. we'll take them off. Okay. I told myself it wasn't going to be working for you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll stand here and hold this. Hector can go ahead and put that on. Now this partial, you got it? This partial, um, let, me, let me take that from you for a second, actually. You have to know which way is the top. And it will only go on one way because the distance from here to the first hole is not the same as the distance from here to the first hole. In addition to that, there's a sharp edge which will go where it touches the wood. And the outer edge, or the exposed edge, near where the child would be, it's been rounded over. It's it's uh, very finished feeling. So it, it can't go this way because that wouldn't make any sense. This is the correct way. You would know it wouldn't go this way because of the sharp edges, and it would throw off the opening because of the distance here. We purposely have offset these holes, um, and uh, so it goes like that. case of this, obviously he's going to pound these in and he's going to have the nuts tightened down here before he goes crazy at the top because it will just flop around. You have to be very careful with this partial until it's all tightened up. Assembled, uh, one person will go around and cinch down all the nuts to the correct amount of pressure. Um, again, you don't have to go uh, get extremely tight with these. Um, just get, you know, very firm. Uh, about once a year, it's a good idea to go back through the law and check the uh, tightness of the nuts. With use and with uh, expansion and contraction, uh, these boards will get thicker and thinner throughout the year. Uh, the nuts may loosen up, uh, so it's good practice uh, about once a year to go through the whole loft and check all the, uh, the tightness of uh, all the nuts. Um, this is probably uh, good enough there, Kevin. 
for intents and purposes of what we're doing. Okay. So I wanted to bring this ladder out because I want my videographer to come up here and take a shot of how it should look at this point to you. So Edwin, you're going to walk in here and climb up this ladder, specifically the orientation of the what we call the dados and the stringers, um, so that as you're looking at this piece and all these parts on the floor, you have a concept of where the placement is um, at this point. Uh, after this point, uh, parts will start being concealed by the, uh, the decking, the next step. All right, great. Thanks. The ladder simply hooks on the rail here, and uh, it's in place. We're going to take this back off now. And I'm going to set it off camera. Okay, so the next thing is uh, the decking, or the, uh, the area that holds up the mattress. And we have a pretty clever system, I think, for, for doing that. This is called a slat, and it has a, a tongue here on the top has what we call a, uh, a rabbit on the side here, or a notch. This notch will, in fact, rest on these stringers that we were talking about before. So this goes from the, across the bed, from the front of the bed to the back of the bed. And uh, there are four or five, depending on the size of the bed you have, of these um, slats. Two of these slats have uh, holes drilled in them. And the purpose of that is after the assembly's finished, we're going to run a screw through here to basically lock the entire bed down together. Uh, so you want to put these, I like to put, there's no set rule for that, but I like to put the ones with the holes in the center or every other. Kevin has a preference, I'm sure. Let's see, we got five on this, okay. So we're gonna put it at the second and the fourth for the, uh, the ones that get drilled and have screws running to lock it in. I'm gonna put it at the second slat and the fourth slat. This is the decking. This is a, a plywood, a hardwood plywood. It's finished, or ha actually has a finish applied, I should say, on one side. It is smooth on both sides, but it has an actual finish applied to one side. This side is the bottom because it is seen underneath, so we actually apply finish to it there. The side that has no finish is the top where the mattress would be. Um, and these simply will sit into the shoulder where this tongue is. One comes in from this side and rests in the shoulder and the other one comes in this side and rests from the shoulder. On the ends of the bed it slides in that dado. So you're starting to see why it's so important to have the parts positioned exactly where they need to be. They're going to work from the two ends towards the center. They'll set it into one tongue and then bring over the other rail and set it onto that tongue. to lift up on the slat 
capture it into the tongue and then push down and then just tighten it all up nicely. It should all seat in fairly firm. Uh, it's not supposed to be a crushing fit, but it should be fairly, fairly firm. Um, once that's in place, I can actually climb up here and run a screw into the, the second and fourth slat on each end. Now as I'm running that screw, Kevin would be pushing on this rail inward. Um, if there's any bow in those rails, we want to remove it and have it held in position with these screws. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, a corded drill would be the way to go. Do you want to run these now? or? Yeah? Okay. Great. Then I'll just climb up here and do it. Of course, you haven't tightened all my nuts down, right? No. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. You don't have to over-tighten these. I think I'm probably out of the camera at this height. Alright, give me just a little push on the back here. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, Edwin, why don't you come back in, please, and take a, a view from underneath. Just go in underneath and now see how the decking structure is supposed to look when it's finished. Um, it's very clean, finished, looks like a little girder system. Did you grab the night shelf over there? Thanks. So, in this particular loft, we have a few accessories that are pretty standard. It's called a night shelf, and it'll just hook on anywhere on the loft. It's a nice little, you know, milk and cookie shelf, as we call them. You can position it pretty much anywhere you want. Um, this particular loft comes with a, what we call a wall mount book box which is to say that this is designed not to go underneath the loft, but it's designed to go mount on the wall, which is what this strip of wood inside the cabinet's about. In this case, you'll need to find the studs on the wall and transfer the marks to here. And you'll want to drill using this drill bit that we're providing. Drill a countersink hole into this bar and run a screw through here into the stud. Now in the event that you can't find a stud in the wall, we have basically these toggles. You'll want to drill a 3 8 inch hole or this size hole into the wall and you'll want to insert this toggle which will then fin out behind the drywall and you will run this screw into it. Uh, it's preferable, obviously, if you find a stud, uh, but if you can't, we're providing the toggles as well. So we're covered in both cases. Uh, that's pretty much it on the loft. Um, if you have any questions, please call us uh, at 877-999-9663. We'll uh, walk you through it.